Uh, okay, there it goes. We've only done uh, about 30 of these together, so you can see how well tuned we are. Uh, but I am Jill Nagy Reynolds. I'm with the uh, Central and Southern Ohio SBA Columbus District or SBA District Office, and uh, this is the result of a partnership that uh, we have with the Ohio University PTAC. Uh, my colleague and I, Shonda uh, Harris, work together to put these. Uh, monthly with PTEC, and we're super excited to have the state of Ohio uh, join us today. Uh, it's one thing to learn to do business with the federal government, which is what we specialize in at the SBA office, but it's another to have wonderful teaming partners uh, that we can uh, collaborate with to put together uh, trainings that include all levels of government, because we understand that it's more than just the federal government, more than just say, state, city, county. And part of what we do is try and teach small business is um, that each level of government operates differently and that uh, uh, your ultimate customer or your best customer may not be the federal government. So uh, uh, we really try to teach you about all levels of government. So we're very excited to have Tim Collins today. Uh, he is going to introduce himself in just a little bit, uh, but let me just go over logistics. Uh, as I start the event off today, uh, know that as you have questions, if you can please put them in the chat. Uh, uh, Shonda will be monitoring the chat and then asking uh, Tim questions as we go along because I know that sometimes asking the question while he's on a particular slide uh, is more helpful than waiting until the end. So uh, we are going to start off with uh, Karen Wavell from the uh, OU PTAC in Cleveland, uh, just to give you an idea of PTAC services. So Karen, do you want to go ahead and talk about PTAC? Sure. Thank you, Jill. Hi, everybody. I think I should have looked at my hair today, too. Uh <laughs> But um, I'd like to thank the Columbus District SBA for partnering with Ohio University PTAC. It's a great partnership. I'm here to tell you a little bit about PTAC for those of you who are not familiar with us. Um, PTAC stands for Procurement Technical Assistance Center. We are we are housed at Ohio University, although we have housed, um, offices across the state. I'm here in Cleveland, Ohio, but there is a PTAC office near you throughout Ohio. Our whole mission is to help small businesses who are interested in pursuing government contracts to expand their market footprint, and that's at the federal, state, and local level. We assist you with all the various registrations, certifications that might be available to you. We help you find opportunities to bid on with the free daily bid matching service that utilizes keywords and codes for what you want to offer to government agencies. And then we have that daily bid matching service that um, scours the internet for opp opportunities for you to bid on. And then you get an email every day, Monday through Friday, with opportunities that fit for what you want to do to help you expand your market. Um, all of our services are free. We receive grant funding to do this for you. And um, I'm very pleased to be here. And I did not take five minutes. I think that's a nutshell. Back to you, Dell. All right. Well, thank you very much, Karen. And Tim, I did get your bio. It's in my phone. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, read that before I turn it over to you. So uh, Tim Collins is the Minority Procurement Coordinator, a job in which he helps minority companies link with state agencies to help procure contracts. He's worked with the department for over 20 years as a construction compliance and certification officer. In the role of construction compliance, he would advise companies on their affirmative actions program to make sure they followed state laws. He served on many committees throughout his tenure as the wellness coordinator, black history chair for uh, DAS and started the, the your certified now what training. He spent over 20 years in the Air National Guard teaching the wing on EEO issues and interpersonal communications, taking EEO complaints and running the WING's drug testing program. Uh, Tim has excellent leadership capabilities as well as active with his Ohio University Alumni Association, trying to increase the minority population in attending the great university. 
wonderful, the great university. He has recently been tasked with providing overall training for the Minority Business Development Division for the Ohio Department of Development. Very, very happy to have you today. So I am going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Tim. Thanks, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I see a bunch of familiar faces in the audience um, today. Um, I'm gonna try to um, give you a little insight on um, the state's procurement certification website. I see some friends here. Hey, Halima, how you doing? You got your hand raised already. Go ahead, Halima. Sorry, that was an accident. Just saying hello. <laughs> oh, how you doing? Um, tell you about our programs that we have and what we have to offer over at the state. Um, a lot of things have changed um, with the state of Ohio, and I wanted to discuss those changes with you. Okay. Um, first, I'm going to share my screen and get everything started. So just give me a second to get everything together here. Okay. You good? Can you put it on full screen? Yeah, yes. Okay. It, the the, the um, Zoom was there, right, right over, over top of it. Can everybody see that? Yes, but you're in slideshow. I, I'm sorry, you're not in full screen mode. Okay, hold on. Give me a second here. There we go. Yes. Oh. Yep. Looks good. Yeah. I had to get rid of this. Okay, there we go. Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, the um, EDGE program, the MBE program, and the, the, the um, WBE program with the state of Ohio as it looks today. Okay, so well, it's been a lot of changes. Um, you know, we was over at DAS, and now um, as of 63021, we have moved to the Department of Development, and they call us the Minority Business Development Division. Okay, um, we did that to um, align us with what we do. They got more loans over there. It's a better fit for us over over here at um, development than it was at DAS. Uh, and I'm, I'm just happy to, that we moved over. The website has changed um, to get in touch with us. Um, it's HTTPS development.ohio.gov business minority business. Um, email address, a website, okay? And in our address, we moved from 4200 Surface Road out to 77 South Highs. So what that means is now I have to pay for parking. So I got a demotion actually. So, you know, it, that happens, okay? So right now we, we, the, um, we are made up of three individual sections, the Community Services Division, the mi Minority um, business Development Division and the Business Services Division. Today, we're going to talk about the Minority Business Development Division. Basically, under that umbrella, we have the certification and the loans. Okay. Mm -hmm. First, we talk about the EDGE program. What is the EDGE program? The EDGE mm -hmm. program is, is something that came about around 20, oh, two, two, 2004, around in 2005. Um, they ruled that the way we were um, setting aside money was unconstitutional because we were basing it basically just on race. So what they did was say, hey, you can't do construction that way. So we can only, the MBE program now is only for goods and services. And they, they, they came out with the EDGE program. What the EDGE program is designed to, to give people who are economically and socially disadvantaged an uh, equal playing field. Okay. Edge program is contracting assistance program designed to assist socially and economically disadvantaged. It was created by Executive Order 2002, okay, 2002, um, 17T. Okay, established goals for state agencies for direct purchases and contract awards. And that establishes that 5%. Okay, I'm going to give you a quiz on this later on. So remember, 5% of everything that goes out has to go towards an edge company. Now, um, you say not everything that goes out. 
everything that, that say, for instance, if my budget is $1 billion, 5% of that has to go towards the edge. So some things don't have edge related um, um, check marks on it, but at the end of the day, they have to come up with 5% of the total. Okay, and, and, and what what is entailed under that? It's go goods and services, professional services, information technology, IT, construction, and architect engin and engineering. Okay, what's the benefits of certification? Okay, um, through our MBACs, we and, and through us, we will give you contract assistance. Okay, financial and, and bonding assistance. We talked about that. We have we have three loan programs. We have the WBE loan program, which is from 45 to half a million. The direct loan program, which is from 45,000 to um, 1.5 million. Okay, now, those two programs, you have to be certified. The, my fault, the micro loan and the direct loan, you have to be certified, either as an MBE or WBE. Now, we have a third program, which is a micro loan um, for the microloan program is from 10 to 45. Okay, I, th I think I, I got all three of those right. Okay, the WBE program, you, you do not have to be certified as a WBE, but if you're not certified, the interest rate on that is 3%. If you, and once you get certified, it, it'll turn to 1.5%, okay? And we give you management and technical assistance um, through our MBACs. You could also go to PTAX. Um, they have similar um, help at the PTAX, um, Karen um, she can attest to that. And her crew, they do a great job um, with the, on the federal side. Um, but the MBAX is, is strictly a state program, okay? Eligibility for the EDGE program, um, it, it's either, you have to fit under either of these uh, categories, either race, ethnic origin, gender, okay? Being a female, born female, um, physical or mental disability, and, and, and that's that's a wide array of things. Okay, a lady called me just the other day, and she wanted to know she got diabetes. Do that fall under um, physical or mental disability? And it's up to the to the state EEO coordinator to determine. But I always say go for it. So we have a form on our website. You need to download. Okay, and put the information on there and get it signed by a doctor for physical and mental disability. Okay, long term residency and environment so isolated from mainstream, and that'll be Appalachia. Okay, um, the, the, the Southeast area, Meigs County area, that would be something that we, we will be um, socially um, dis, um, disabled or dis, um, in, in, in the Appalachian. So if you live in that area, we will um, certify you in a hub zone and other objective relevant reasons. Okay, so that's that's up to the, the state EEO coordinator to determine that right there. Okay. How does a business qualify, you say? Okay, um, like I say, hub zone, social dis disadvantage, economic dis disadvantage. I just went over that. So we'll go to the next slide there. What is economic disadvantage? Okay. Um, if your net worth do not exceed $750,000, excluding your primary residence, okay, um, you get, you have also um, um, your retirement, okay? If you cannot touch your retirement, then you don't have to include it. But if you can touch your retirement, then we will include it. Okay, um, the fair market value of assets, including all equity in the primary residence and certified business cannot exceed $6 million. So that's changed. I, I know in the past, um, there used to be $250,000 to get into the program, you, your, your personal net worth. Um, you put, you fill out a personal net worth statement, but now we, since the new rules change um, in, in, in October, it's up to 750, okay? So that's kind of good. What is economic disability? Okay, your adjusted gross income cannot exceed 350 average over the past three tax years. Okay, or your NAX code, you know your NAX code, that's a federal code. Um, 
in the things that you do the most of, you cannot go over your, now you, they either have the numbers of employees or your, 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 your sales. Your sales cannot, you cannot graduate out of that program and be in our program. So if, if, if you exceed the, the, the dollar amount or the amount of people and graduate out of the NAX pro, um, program, um, then you cannot be in our program, okay? Any questions so far? Any questions? Because I could take them as we go. All right. What is social disadvantage? Being a member of a racial minority group, okay? Or show some other demonstration of personal disadvantage not common to other small businesses and being an assistive threat, okay? Other requirements. Um, you must be for profit. <laughs> um, a lot of people contact us and they are a nonprofit and we do not take nonprofits. You have to be for profit. The company um, must have been in business at least one year prior to applying for our programs. Okay. You have to be in business prior, one year prior to applying. Okay. Company must be owned, 51% owned by, by somebody that's in a dis disadvantaged group. Okay, own and control. So, you know, some people uh, try to get in and say, well, they, they try to um, give it to their wife because women can't get in this program because of the gender um, qualifications. And what we do then is we heavily, heavily try to interview and, and make sure that it's not a pass through and she's just not, uh, we have a rule in there that she, if she's just a marketing, secretarial person, um, then she has no knowledge of the business, then we try to eliminate that from happening. We don't want nobody in the program um, like that. We don't need nobody in there. It's a, it's a lot of money out there for, for people to get. And, you know, we don't need nobody trying to circumvent the system. So we try to do a, a, a really strict interview to make sure that we don't get anybody in there that's um, don't supposed to be in the program, okay? Um, do some people get passed? Yeah, yeah. Some people get passed. Uh, we can't check everything the way we want to, but we try to be thorough in our interview to make sure that, that it, um, they do not get in, okay? Um, that's where the owner must possess requis requisite knowledge of the business and the industry. Uh, example, okay, I, I think I, I, I was talking to Karen and Jill about this and, and Sean about this yesterday. We had a lady that she um, taught class at, at a local school and she wanted to be a, a, in construction management. So during the interview, you know, um, I talked to her and, and she told me how she was a, she was um, in head of the um, homecoming court and she did um, all these other things for the school and, and all this other stuff. And I'm like, wow, she didn't say nothing about, you know, having any knowledge of the business and industry. Then I asked for her husband's resume and his, his, his resume was 31 years of construction management, reading blueprints and, and running projects. So we had to turn that one down, okay? But, you know, we try to do a thorough job of, of making sure we weed out the people that don't need to be in the program and must have the day-to-day -day control of the business. And that's the question we asked her right there. If you're in the school all day, how do you devote your, your attention to this business? And four hours in the evening ain't gonna do it, okay? Because um, I think most businesses do their construction during the daytime. So she did not have day-to-day -day control of the, and expertise of, of the business. So that's what we try to weed out, okay? Okay, so if you are ready, you ready, you got all your paperwork together um, and you're ready to um, get certified. Oh, you don't have it ready. Say you don't have it ready. You can go to the um, EOD. You can go to the MBAC office, and at the MBAC office, um, you can either do a standard um, application, the MBAC standard application, or MBAC fast track. Which, if you have a contract that's pending, um, example, um, ODNR, um, and you have come up with 
the solution and you're the solution and they want to they want to give you a contract but you're not certified yet you will go down to the MBAC. you will um, somehow have the contract information with you um, odnr um, has promised that if you know we would get this contract we just need to be certified okay and that happens i mean that happens a lot more than you would think then you'll go ahead and you go through the MBAC. That's the only way you can get expedited. So in, in expedited, we got to do it within um, a week, I think, seven days. Okay, you, we have to turn it over within seven days. And when I say EO standard, that means you just go ahead and you go in there and you put the application in. Tim? Yes, ma'am. We do have a couple of questions. Hey, go ahead, go ahead. So, um, I know people are raising their hands, but I think so that Tim can flow, we don't have to interrupt him. If you can type them in the chat, that would be great. Um, here's the first. Um, um, Valencia started her business in another state in 2019. 